How's it going YouTube? Got 4 Star TCG back again and today I wanted to do a discussion video on booster box prices versus card prices and just sort of the market that goes on the whole market that goes on with within this boot box versus card versus pack kind of uh, kind of market because it's really interesting and I haven't really seen a lot of analyses on this uh, going on. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out all of the uh, filming everything uh, in my new space so uh, bear with me as hopefully each video I'll try to figure something out and it'll it'll be a little nicer. Um, but getting into it really so booster box versus card prices versus pack prices all these things are are very different because uh, the debate that's been there for the longest time is is a booster box a unique collectible item outside of the cards right so is a booster box is a booster pack a unique collectible item irrespective of the value of the cards that are inside right um, so I've personally always seen booster boxes and stuff as avenues to get cards because that's what I collect. I don't really collect any kind of sealed product or anything. Um, so my when I think of a booster box, I think I do like a little card value calculation. I say, okay, what cards can I get out of that booster box? How likely is it that I'm going to get those cards out of that booster box? What's the likelihood that they'll be in good condition? And is that, you know, all of this together gives me an idea of how much I should pay for some booster box if I were to go out and buy it. Um, Usually with this calculation, something like a modern booster box is probably a good idea for me to buy because I'm going to be getting a lot of cool cards, you know, there's a good chance to pull something nice, and chances are if I get it, it'll be in nice condition, it'll grade pretty well, and you know, for a hundred bucks or something, probably a good proposition. Uh, something like an EX series booster box, especially like in the pre-Gold Star era, where you're paying five, six, seven thousand dollars for a box where you're getting two to three EX cards if you're lucky and in PSA 10 those only go for several hundred dollars that's something where it's like okay that's not something that I want to go into um, and that's how some people look at booster boxes but some boxes seem to get valued in other ways and it seems to to be a unique collectible item outside of the uh, the value of the cards. Uh, again, like EX series booster boxes, the value of the cards there, even with the recent rise, is really not that significant. It's, it's not that high. Uh, so these, the EX series boxes, especially like Delta Species and stuff where you're getting one EX card, Hall on Phantoms, one EX card. You know, there are only three EX cards in that set. If you're lucky, you'll pull two from a booster box, but one is, is fairly common. Um, and you know, guarantee 10 is, is not happening in those booster boxes. Uh, you know, pack fresh card quality issues are, are fairly standard in EX series. You know, if I were betting, I'd say that any card you pull out of, any hollow you pull out of an EX box is probably gonna be a nine. Um, so it's it's very interesting and it's, it's very different to see when these when these cards that have come in these boxes that have comparable low card values have very high booster box values there's usually something else going on there right um, and that something else is this idea of you know box scarcity and the idea that a booster box is a unique sealed collectible item in and of itself um, so you see something like you know, an EX Delta Species booster box that goes for many thousands, probably, I don't know the market, probably, I'd say probably 10 grand for, an, uh, for a uh, Delta Species sealed booster box in this market. Um, that value is not going to be driven by the cards that are inside. It's not the same as a modern booster box. Um, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, this idea of the box as a unique sealed collectible doesn't hold for some of the rarest boxes in the hobby because we've seen these sort of swings on stuff like first edition base booster boxes um, where they've largely gone in line with the cards at the time so you know in 2016 2017 when first edition base was going up so were the prices for first edition base booster boxes and then you know there was a little bit of a lull we hit you know 
periods where I think there was like a $50,000 sale for a uh, base booster box through Heritage fairly recently in the last year or two. Um, and then of course we just had the recent sale of, of 200 grand, you know, so that's really crazy. And I think there were some things that, that affected that $50,000 sale. Mostly I think the, the scare around fake first edition booster boxes at the time. Um, I think Rusty had, I think it might've been last year when the sale happened. Um, and Rusty had just sort of talked about his experience with a fake first edition boot base booster box. Um, so the whole idea it's and it's sort of been this debate you know is is whether the uh whether the booster box price is a function of the unique collectability of the box or whether it's a function of the expected value of the cards inside um and for this again it's sort of it like goes by eras right so in the base era or the Watsi era, where it's, you know, I'd say it's fairly even um, between, you know, there was a good amount of Watsi stuff printed. People generally, you know, they like the cards, they like the boxes as well. Uh, the box availability is, I mean, it's obviously not ridiculously high, but, you know, these boxes come up for sale fairly often. I certainly see Watsi boxes a lot more than I see EX series boxes and, and stuff like that. Um, so there it's it's much more tied to the card value and again we've we've seen these rises in booster boxes very very mainly in line with the with the card values right first edition base you know i think um, scott paid 75,000 or something around that area for his uh, maybe closer to 80 you know we had the $50,000 sort of big like whoa that's but that sort of coincided with some time when the first edition base market was a little lower compared to where it had been in the past, especially uh, in 2016, 2017, with you know 20th anniversary, Pokemon Go, you know more pe just the demographic rise at that time. You're hitting 20 years from Pokemon. The people who were 10 years old at that point collecting, they got cards, they got money, they want to get back in, and, and this is what they've been doing. Um, so. What so EX series is kind of the exception to the norm here, where we see that the booster box prices are not really related to the card value in any way. Um, and normally, you know, when there's a discrepancy between the box price and the card price, that signals opportunity, right? Uh, and we've seen this happen in the past where card prices actually outstripped the like the expected value of the booster box has outstripped the uh, p cost of purchasing the booster box so people have cracked boxes in order to get cards to grade. We saw this happening a lot in 2016-2017 uh, when the Watsi prices boomed and the box prices kind of lagged behind. Um, a lot of people were cracking you know first edition Fossil, first edition Team Rocket, um, even stuff like base booster boxes they were cracked because the the card value was there uh, where it made financial sense to open these booster boxes and grade the cards. Uh, <laughs> obviously that that corrected itself. Uh, the market for booster boxes changed, the market for the cards changed, um, and largely it now is not a good financial opportunity to it's not a good financial decision to open up a booster box. Uh, I feel like this is probably like a fairly solid place for the market to be. I generally don't think that it should be uh, financially worth it to open up a booster box because then again that like signals an imbalance in the market. Uh, for like the entirety of the Pokemon era it's you know on average you are losing money on a booster box unless you are getting it at distributor pricing um, or there's something strange going on in the market. Um, so this, this, the sort of overall message that I want to send about the booster box market, the booster pack market, this kind of stuff, is it's kind of interesting is that the, the, the booster box market is very intricately tied to the 
card market and the card prices. And it's usually the card prices that are the driver of the booster box market. And we've seen this in the past. We've seen when the card for 2016, 2017, card prices for Watsy go up. And then uh, after card prices for Watsy go up, it becomes financially viable to open a booster box. People do it. And then the booster box prices go up because the supply is no longer there. The demand's pretty high. Um, you know, and this is just sort of, we see it with modern as well. Um, where you know your flash fire booster boxes gone up your uh, um, any any time there's like a big chase card in a set value is going to go up burning shadows great example of this you know your booster box just from the past generation you know you're looking at probably over two hundred dollars or something for that box i think right about now um even though that was like one of the most heavily printed eras of the tcg is early sun and moon um but, this is a big but, is it? but when you get into something where the scarcity is so significant that the booster box in and of itself is, is that there's, like, there's this imbalance, right? Where EX series printed, you know, and much lower numbers than EX series, it's, you know, fairly well, uh, fairly well documented that EX series as an era, as like when I talk about eras, I mean like the Watsy era, the E series era, uh, the EX era, diamond and pearl, black and white, XY, sun and moon, those big blocks. Out of all of those, EX is the era that had the least printing, had the least just sheer numbers of cards printed. Uh, when you get into that area, when there's the scarcity of boxes is such that it's you know very difficult to find them. It's it was basically never financially viable to open. Um, the boxes do sort of take on this mystique in and of themselves of being a unique collectible item. And you know boxes are are all unique collectible items. But when there's this uh, when there's this discrepancy, when there is um, such a low number of where when the supply is so low for something like EX era, uh, something like Japanese EX era is, is an even better uh, description of this uh, because the boxes there are non existent and they sell for a ton of money. Uh, and the cards, by comparison, really not that much, especially the, the stuff like uh, uh, Japanese EX Dragon Frontiers where everything in there is off center, you know. You, you're never opening a box of that in, in, like, in order to make money, uh, the, the financial, even if you pull a Charizard star, it's like not even worth it. Um, something like that, it's, it's just so out there that uh, there are different market forces that are at play. Um, so what I've seen a lot of people doing sometimes is, is looking at box prices and saying, because you know, EX Delta Species is 10 grand, right? then therefore the cards within it, using sort of like the logic of Watsi and Modern to apply to EX era and stuff. Um, and that's not necessarily the way that the market is working right now. Uh, in, the, in the future, we might see some different dynamics come into play where the, uh, the market for those, the market for the cards catches up to the market for the booster boxes or something like that. Uh, but really right now we're not seeing the same forces at play with old Watts era booster boxes, modern booster boxes, and stuff in the EX era. Um, so that's sort of my whole spiel on the booster box versus card market, how card prices affect booster box prices, how booster box prices affect card prices. Um, and yeah, it's really sort of like you, it's, it's a unique, it's a very unique market and you're not able to nail down one particular dynamic that affects all of it. Um, but, you know, definitely leave your, uh, your questions and your comments in the video section, in the uh, comment section below. Uh, really interested in hearing your thoughts on the booster box market, especially, you know, with the, with the 200k base booster box, uh, uh, sale recently through Heritage. I thought it was a great time to just talk about the, you know, expected value booster box prices versus card prices and stuff. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Stick around for more videos.